So if you're from San Diego, you might recognize this as airplanes approaching our airport, which is right by our downtown. And this makes the landing there notoriously difficult because you have to fly right by those buildings over there and right over these hills that I'm filming from. <laughs> There's another Southwest 737. Finally, let's look at the actual landing approach again, right in front of those buildings, right across the freeway. And this is an A320, which is actually a better airplane than 737, if I'm being honest. But so let's take a look at why this approach and landing is so difficult using a flight simulator. So this is the free and open source flight simulator flight gear, which I'm quite fond of because I like free and open source things. And we're going to go ahead and fly the practice approach. As you see that uh, cayenne sort of triangle stretching out from the little purple thing at the end, which is the runway, that's the approach corridor. So we're going to be flying through that. And so we're going to set up the navigation radio for something called the localizer, which is going to help guide us in using a radio navigation aid. And we're going to go ahead and set up the autopilot. And so this is not necessarily flying the approach exactly how they would, but it is how you would fly it if you were coming in from the east, and that gives me a chance to explain why you would land this way, because, like I said, it's difficult because you have to come in low for a landing right over top of a bunch of terrain and buildings, and the runway is sitting pretty much right at the bottom of, it's almost like it being at the bottom of a valley. There's hills to the east and hills to the west, and you pretty much have to land facing to the west. Oh, take a look at that beautiful... Uh, Boeing 777 done up in the American Airlines library. So, you have to land, though, facing to the west because the wind is blowing from the east. And you have to land into the wind to help reduce the landing speed. And the way the San Diego airport is built, there's really no room to expand it. <laughs> and there's nowhere else to put it. So you have to land coming close like that. Also, if you look on the left there, you can see there's a little airstrip where you can go skydiving, which is right by the approach corridor too, which is fun. <laughs> uh, so there I'm deploying flaps. That's going to help slow the airplane down. See that little marker there on the left of the uh, HUD showing us the stall speed. Or sorry, the left of the attitude indicator showing us the stall speed. So stall speed, which is the minimum speed you can fly the airplane at, goes down as increase the flaps. And so there, you can see now the autopilot is taking over and putting us on what's called the localizer. And the localizer is, what it's going to do is it's going to keep us inside that corridor I was talking about. And it's going to keep us facing right towards the runway and heading for it. And so that's going to provide us with sort of horizontal guidance. But the, one of the difficulties of landing at San Diego is that there's no vertical guidance, right? There's a sort of it's almost like a radar beam, although it's not actually radar, that is going out from the end of the runway and telling us whether or not we're heading for it horizontally, but it can't tell us whether or not we're descending at the correct rate. And that's, again, because there are hills so close to the end of the runway that it's not feasible to have any sort of vertical guidance. So there's not what's called an instrument landing system at San Diego International Airport. There's only what we call the localizer. So the localizer, again, is what tells you horizontally your position. And there's the glide slope, which would be the other component to make it a full instrument landing system. And San Diego International Airport does not have that. 
so we're going to have to do that ourselves. So since I'm trying to learn to edit videos, I'll try to put up the approach plate, which is something that shows us how to fly an instrument approach to the runway, which you can see there's a little bit of clouds in this uh, sort of real-time weather that the simulator is rendering. But because it's an airliner, we'd fly an instrument approach until we get fairly close anyways. And so we're using that approach plate to determine the altitudes that we want to descend to at different distances from the end of the runway. Because you might also see uh, in that li little uh, box that has the attitude indicator, artificial horizon with the blue and the brown, uh, there's a little thing that says DME, and that's showing us our distance from the end of the runway. This DME stands for distance measuring equipment. And depending on how far we are from the end of the runway, the approach plate will tell us how low we want to descend. And so I've been using the autopilot here to descend to the appropriate altitudes at a nice even rate until we're in spitting distance of the runway. But at a bigger airport, or well, that's the thing about San Diego, it is a very like big airport in terms of traffic. But there's no room to build a second runway, there's no room to make the runway any longer, and there's nowhere else to put the runway that's not at the bottom of two hills on either side. And again, the hills to the east... Oh, there's the warning telling us we're 2,500 feet from the ground, so we're getting close. So it's about time to put the landing gear down, actually. Still just maintaining that nice even descent rate. Go ahead and go down a little bit further. Slow down a little bit more. And there you can see the area, that little gray patch, is where I was filming from for the real airplanes, not the simulator. And look at that beautiful San Diego. I think this is over La Mesa. Coming in over Balboa Park and Hillcrest, where I used to live and where I filmed those videos from. So there goes the landing gear. Since it's a simulator, we can just go outside and watch it extend. Again, look at that beautiful 777-300ER. Increase the descent rate. And in just a second here, I think I'm at and I take over the approach by hand because, yep, there we go. So now I'm flying the approach by hand, the autopilot has been disengaged, and it's because you can see now the runway is in sight. And notice the runway is in sight, but uh, so are some buildings on the left and hills on the right. So uh, this is not gonna be easy. And it's made a lot easier by the fact that it's a simulator, so I don't have to worry about dying and killing 200 some odd passengers. This is about the point where I would enter the frame for those videos I recorded, because there, that gray patch on the right again is Balboa Park, which if you're ever in San Diego or you live here, is a fantastic place to go visit. Coming up on the runway, again, following that little pink diamond on the attitude indicator to show us where we are relative to the localizer whether or not we're horizontally situated. And then in just a second, you'll be able to see there's three li four lights at the end of the runway. And I think there are three white, one red right now. And you see, I'm gonna get a little bit low. So ideally what you want is two white and two red, which means that you're exact descending at exactly the right rate. And notice how close I am to the hills and the buildings there. And I think that's three reds and one white. So that's a little bit on the low side, but that's still a standard approach. Uh, four reds would be very bad. That would mean I would need to apply power and go around, but this is a simulator and we're still on one white, so we're good. And now, finally over that hill, go ahead and reduce the power a little bit. Start flaring up, getting ready to actually touch down on the runway. We don't want to touch down in these arrows because those are for takeoff only. We want to touch down right past the numbers here at 27, indicating the runway heaven heading of 270. Touch down. Go ahead and apply thrust reversers. The airplane stopped, and there you have it. So, it's a lot easier in a simulator, but hopefully you can see just how close you have to get to those buildings and to the 
hills of uh, Bankers, it's actually called Bankers Hill, uh, just to the west of Balboa Park, and uh, why this approach is so difficult. There's also another option of landing the other direction, but A, that means you're landing with a tailwind, which makes uh, landing even more difficult, right? Because you're trying, when you land, you have to slow the airplane down from its flight speed all the way down to, you know, zero speed when you're stopped on the ground. And if you have a tailwind, that's all the more difficult. We actually refer to that as another runway, even though it's the same physical tarmac, but facing in the opposite direction. And so, runway 9, the runway that's facing, you know, a heading of 90 degrees, so exactly op 180 degrees opposite of 270 degrees, the runway we just landed on, uh, that runway does have a full instrument landing system, and it's used when there is very, very poor visibility, like fog, and when the wind is either completely calm or blowing from the east. But because San Diego is coastal, the wind is almost always blowing in from the ocean, uh, from west to east, and again, you want to land into the winds to help slow yourself down once you're on the runway. So. Let's go say a hello to these small little uh, Alaska Airlines planes and park the jet. I think those are little CRJs. So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of why landing here is so difficult. But uh, don't let that deter you from visiting. Although don't be a zoning. Bye.